Pete, a higher i9 CPU by Intel and loads of top-end specs. Does it justify the price tag for the F1A mini PC by Ace Magic? And how well does it work with the new D8 hybrid storage box by Terra Master? Let's inspect! everybody, great to meet you, I'm the Tech Mishka. On the channel we inspect a lot of cool tech such as those Windows-based mini computers which have very tempting prices now and we are already halfway through 2024 and have so many exciting new models. I feel that this market niche is now more saturated than ever, which for consumers like us is really a great deal. This new device comes from the company Ace Magic and I've already tried out a couple of their products. They recently had a hit on their reputation related to a specific software for controlling LEDs on one of their previous models. I've already tested it, didn't discover anything, but there have been some users reporting issues with their first batch of the software. So definitely a lot of things to try out and this here is called the F1A, probably the idea is to somewhat relate the name to the popular racing series and associate it with really great speed. And given the fact that we have i9, 12th generation of processor inside, it's quite easy to believe. But I've already discovered some caveats I'd like to talk about. And that's also a great opportunity to try out the new D8 hybrid storage from TerraMaster. So I guess there's already quite a lot on the plate. Let's figure it out. Ace Magic, formerly known with the weird name Ace Magician, is a Chinese mini PC brand gaining a lot of popularity lately. I've already tried some of their previous mini PCs and I can clearly see the company growth in terms of design and build quality. Right now, already well comparable to B-Link, Minis Forum and why not with some of the other non-Chinese brands such as Asus and Gigabyte? Talking about unboxing, I'd definitely remember Ace Magic Mini PCs for being packed in really big boxes. We can't even call it a waste of space because it is well utilized inside. The belt around shows details about the specs and we know that the other revisions from the F1 series are gonna have about the same kind of box. So here's the F1A itself, well wrapped and apparently arriving safe and sound. This is how you're supposed to pull it up and I have immediately noticed that the computer feels heavy. Yeah, it is much heavier when compared to other mini PCs, so interesting to see what hides on the inside. There are two very apparently different components. The legs, which are unusually high maybe in order to improve the airflow, and the top plates, which has these few millimeter cuts, maybe contributing to the very same cause. Meaning that we should carefully explore the thermal performance as well. Good amount of ports both in the back and the front, and quite appealing design. There actually are two other, much fresher colors. If you decide to stick to the black color, keep in mind that you're going to see dust flakes all the time and it captures fingerprints, so not very practical. In the accessories compartment, you're gonna find a 120 watt power adapter and a VESA mount. Specifications are quite promising, a core i9 CPU, which always sounds trustworthy. There are 32 gigs of RAM, a 1 terabyte NVMe, active cooling, a bunch of connectivity ports and pre-licensed Windows 11 as an operating system. Did you notice what just happened? We, we talked about those many specs and I presented them the way Ace Magic wants you to perceive them. That's, that's a bit of a trap and that's why tech reviewers are here on YouTube. To, to help you to understand the, the real picture, because sometimes they give you the part that they want you to see. For example, yes, it's very true, we have 12,900H. It's more of a mobile, very high-end processor from the 12th generation of Intel Core i9 series, and that's spectacular, but you now releasing a high-end product in 2024 with DDR4 raises certain questions because already DDR5 pricing is attractive enough and uh, easily accessible and I would expect seeing DDR5 in pretty much any mid-range or high-end computer release now in this year. Also uh, during the teardown you're gonna see that the storage and the RAM come from lesser known brands meaning that I'm a bit nervous about the testing and you know, it's very interesting that besides this rather bulky design, we have two fan-based cooling 
So yes, we're going to push the thermal characteristics and see how it handles certain situations. But you know what is even more interesting? The fact that we have Windows 11, as Ace Magic wants you to know, I think is that it's the home edition instead of the Pro, which would cost them you know, just a few more bucks for an OEM license. Something that you can easily upgrade on your own. And speaking of upgrades, I think we should make a teardown and figure out which are our options for repairs and adding more hardware. To access the RAM and the storage, all the tools that you need are your fingers. That's right, you don't even need to have a screwdriver. Access happens from the bottom side and be very careful with the fan cable because the fan is bound to the cover. This here is the access to the NVMe drive and the two SO DIMMs. For the record, great to see that the RAM is not soldered. But the promised extra NVMe expansion slot is not to be seen here. You can still upgrade the default storage with a larger one, but I was hoping to see something about extra storage in this rather generous amount of space. If you remove the mid plate, there is access to the Realtek Wi-Fi module, which apparently can also be replaced. And at the very moment where I thought, that's it, in terms of disassembling, a little noise made me take a closer look, pull a little bit more, and wow, here's the entire board. And looking at the structure, there even is the possibility to access the CPU. So that's a bit of a paradox, limited storage upgradeability, but you can pretty much replace anything on this mini computer. And this is by far the easiest kind of a teardown experience I've ever got on a mini computer. Whether intentional or not, Ace Magic have done a splendid job. Just don't take any risks that are not well justified. Let's move on to the stress testing side. Since the NVMe brand hasn't been exactly trustworthy, I'm focusing here first. It looks like the available one terabyte of storage is great for reading, but when it comes to writing, you may expect a speed drop at some point, likely after 50 to 60 gigabytes have been written down. And since we have identified the storage expansion situation, let me bring in some proper high-end consumer-grade expansion solution Today's video sponsor being Terra Master with their quite exciting D8 hybrid solution. It is an 8-bay storage device and you can fit inside four 3.5-inch HDDs or four NVMEs. The hard disks are meant to be used for the so-called cold data, where writing speed is not that crucial, while the flash drives are for the so-called hot data. Note that this is not a NAS solution, think of it as a DAS with some extra benefits or an expansion module for an already existing NAS setup. Concerning the usual industry benchmark tests that I run, and with this mini PC they make good sense because on one side it is A testing the stability of the components and B showing whether the system is designed in a way to utilize the full potential of the processor. And remember that in here, I'm running the system with its default BIOS settings. You can tune up the CPU performance a little bit more, which will increase the fan noise levels, as well as the power consumption. Speaking of which, in idle state, the box consumes almost nothing. In full load mode, given the fact that this exact model has 45 watts TDP maximum, I feel it's a well-expected result. In many cases, especially gaming or video editing, you will end up with a feeling that the box is getting warm. In such kind of situations, you will definitely hear the operation of the fans. Did I just mention games? Yeah, a few quick samples. The iconic CS2, which runs very smoothly in 1080p. If you want to run it in 4K resolution, well, I, I'd rather not, because experience is going to be compromised. If you want to think of something with higher-end graphics, let's say there might be better setups for that purpose. The Iris Graphics iGPU, which is part of the CPU, is not as powerful as the current AMD-based achievements, but still very decent. Quite far from the performance of a dedicated GPU, however. If you want to attach such one, by the way, there unfortunately is no USB 4 port, nor a Thunderbolt connector or whatsoever, so we are sort of limited. Meaning that this mini PC can be pretty awesome about anything but 
heavy gaming. Office work or a multimedia station or a regular workstation, even a video or photo editing setup, these are all very good and relevant use cases. Having a Core i9 from a very up-to-date for 2024 architecture is definitely a very strong reason to believe that this rather compact computer is about to stay relevant in the next few years. And while I'm absolutely delighted with most of what we've seen so far, there definitely are certain features I'd love to see implemented in a different way, such as the lack of easy storage expansion options or the use of DDR4 as opposed to DDR5, the lack of Oculink, Thunderbolt and so on for other eGPU connectivity features and the somewhat noisy fan. So, bottom line, that's, that's the mini computer I'm going to remember as the one with the possibly highest kind of repairability score and some missed opportunities around upgrading and also the Windows 11 Home Edition on the release. That's a bit of a weird choice. Um, you know, it's also weird that it comes with DDR4 and a bit of a lower end storage inside, but if the goal was to keep the price really attractive, I think Ace Magic have very well accomplished this mission because it's a fact that for the processor alone, Intel are willing to charge most vendors with $617. And for around 100 bucks more, Ace Magic provides you with 32 gigs of RAM, with a lot of storage, with a wireless module, system board, housing, cooling, power supply, and so on. That's a fully working computer, which is definitely going to stay relevant for the next few years to come. And I think the price is very well justified. Obviously, if you're looking for a computer where the CPU performance should be your top priority, that's a pretty good deal. The F1A by Ace Magic. And now it's your turn to let me know how it feels in the long run in case you already have it or are you excited about this new release? Let's comment in the section below the video. If you want to buy a new mini computer, I would say ask yourself the question whether you really need this piece of gear. If the answer is still yes, check the video description for a link with a discount to the Ace Magic F1A. And that's been everything I wanted to share with you about this particular model. If that was useful and helpful, give me a like, subscribe to the channel for more cool tech inspections. And I, Michael, the Tech Mishka, gotta see you in the next one. Bye!